I remember people would sometimes say, oh man, look, the only way racism is going to end, the only way the indo pac conflict is going to end, or the only way any of this stuff is going to end is if there's an alien invasion. We've had our alien invasion. Do we all pull together like Independence Day, or are we all going to be trying to do each other over like a rival? The world is going through an incomparable pandemic in COVID-19, and a large portion of us are lucky to be stuck at home under lockdown. There's been plenty of time to consume art, music, and cinema. And under lockdown is an attempt to talk to those behind the work. I've spent this time listening to British actor and rapper Riz Ahmed's new album, The Long Goodbye. Known more recently for his appearances in franchises such as Star Wars and Venom, the British actor's new piece of work is thought provoking and heartbreaking at the same time. Don't make me smash your melon up, try throwing shade on melanin Send them seven up, I'm better bitter with the lemon in They put their boots on our ground, I put my roots in their ground I put my truth in its sound, I spit my truth in its brown I reached out to Riz to talk about the album, accompanying short film, A World Without Borders and how he's been spending his time at home. I spit my truth in its brown What have you been doing like at home? I feel like uh... I know you well enough watching all your lives recently. I know four o'clock is supposed to be meditation time, but you're not doing that according to last night's uh, live. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm talking to you instead, man. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? You know, I mean, it's tricky, isn't it? Because I think a lot of us are yo-yoing between these different states of mind. On the one hand, we feel like we're in this kind of bubble and we're in a giant sleepover. And on the other hand, it's like, oh, hang on a minute. This is the opportunity for me to paint the spare room or to write that screenplay or to record that album. And then there's the other state of mind, which actually never really goes away, which is a creeping dread, which is the confusion, the anxiety, the fear, which just creates the, the foggiest kind of state of mind. That actually makes it really hard, I think, to be um, productive or to be relaxed. It's tricky. I kind of bounce around between these different states of mind a lot. And I think a lot of people are feeling the same way and that reflects in my days. So some days I wake up and I'll just be like, no, I'm just going to like try and be still today and silent. And other days I'm like, right, let's do 15 phone calls. I'm going to do 300 push-ups, and yeah, let's do the whole thing. So it's confusing, man. This is unprecedented. Um, I had known of all of your previous like music stuff and then Sweatshop Boys and at the same time the night off. And then Star Wars, Venom, and then you come back to this. So it feels like you want to keep tying back to music. Is that like not conscious like thing that you're going for? Well, I guess music is a place where I get to write the script. You know, I get to direct the story. It's an unfiltered space for me to express myself. That's what it's always been. I think a big part of why I make music isn't necessarily to represent anyone. It's to try and work things out that I need to get off my chest is to try and kind of untie knots that I've got in my head. And that's what music allows me to do as a space. But I think increasingly as an actor now that I get to kind of have more input into the projects I do or to help shape them a bit more, I think film is becoming that as well. Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome back to the long lockdown. Talk about the theme of home and what it means to you. I've been watching all your like YouTube lives, more or less. I really enjoyed the stuff with Hassan and Gaz Khan. I really enjoyed Fatima and Nikesh's like contribution to the conversation yesterday. It's mad to expect that a place should be recognizable at all times. That it, that it will, of course, turn on you and betray you and wound you mm. like any other living thing might. You've spoken a lot about the theme of the album, but you've not really spoken about the music so far. Musically speaking, it's all from Rodinho, from Tom Calvert, who is a producer of the Sweatshop Boys as well. For me, the kind of soundscape that Tom has created in this album, that feels like home. It's got all those influences from, from Garage to drum and bass to Kavali to Bollywood, you know. This is all the different parts of me um, brought together into a kind of new language that, that is my own. I'm like Dhamma Ali 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 For Nusra Fateh Ali, Muhammad Ali And Machiavelli trying to put Pakis on the telly uh, trying, trying. Growing up there wasn't any Now we 24-7 either ISIS or Emmys Watching Rami sipping Remy Rep till they resent me Hope my people proud and don't forget me Hope my people don't just end up as a memory A lot of your music, I mean it's always been political It's always been uh, Power packed. It's always been, uh, you know, inquisitive. It's always been challenging. But this one seems like it's like a daring concept album. I think Pitchfork called it a daring concept album. 
was it like, okay, yes, I got to make this concept album. It's got to be about Brexit. It's got to be about this breakup. And like, then did you approach it? It wasn't ever specifically about this is an album about Brexit. It was about something that was both very personal, but I felt was very global. I'm interested in, I guess, like a lot of diasporic kids of like reconnecting with my culture in a way that isn't necessarily just through my parents. This idea for using the metaphor of a heartbreak kind of came from that tradition, from that Sufi tradition, from that Pawali tradition, that separation from the beloved um, being a metaphor for, in that case, the divine, but in this case, your country. You know, I've had a lot of feedback from people in India and the Philippines and Hungary and you know, all saying, you know, I feel like I'm going through a breakup with my country. I think a lot of people are feeling that. It's a very kind of global sentiment. I say that it's, it's the kind of other global pandemic that we're facing, you know what I mean? And actually on the back of Corona, we have to be even more mindful of how people, certain groups are scapegoated, surveilled, marginalized, um, and how it might lead to a world of even more closed borders and fear of the other. Did they ask you where you're from? Where are you really from? The question seems simple, but the answer's kind of long. I could tell them Wembley, but I don't think that's what they want, and I don't want to tell them more, because anything I say is wrong. Obviously, the theme of borders and identity and its recurring through your uh, music and a lot of, I mean, the short films and stuff, specific to COVID and like Corona, like this time that we're in, Borders just seem absolutely irrelevant. It's strange, isn't it? Because borders seem more meaningless and more uh, consequential than ever before. I think the experience of um, people stuck on the wrong side of a border or stuck in a country not of their own or the experience of people in Sweden and how that might differ from the experience of people in Italy is is huge on the other hand of course like you know the things that really matter whether they're tsunamis or wars or you know art or viruses they don't respect borders borders are invisible to them and the only way that we can kind of um, really engage with this crisis is by disregarding borders to some extent right I remember people would sometimes say oh man look the only way racism is going to end the only way the Indo-Pak conflict's going to end. The only way any of this stuff's going to end is if there's an alien invasion. We've had our Indian invasion. Okay, that's happened now. Um, Do we all pull together like Independence Day or are we all going to be trying to do each other over like a rival? What I would love to see is that society and the world that we rebuild after this isn't one that is based on fear, isn't one of closed borders, isn't one of pointing the finger, um, is one of recognizing our commonality, our common humanity. I spent my truth in his ground. Who made you coolest? Me, who gave you jewelry? We gave you the food to eat. Who got to make you Can you tell me about like the filming process? Um, of the film, the idea, it, it, I mean, it definitely comes across as a very collaborative effort from your side and Anil. The album was finished, um, I was put in touch with Anil and we just kind of connected on a personal level straight away. A lot of the time as an artist, as an actor, as a director, you can find that you're kind of like servicing someone else's vision. And I think we both wanted to just kind of make something that was just a direct line into our brains and our hearts. The reality is, is that the scenes portrayed in the short film, they are happening right now. They are happening in India. They are happening in Myanmar. Versions of that have happened in Europe. You know, the future always seems so far away and then suddenly it's right here. Times of crisis or social disintegration that's kind of touched on in the short film, they're the same way, you know. People from South Asia or East Asia have kind of got in touch saying what it brings up for them. People from Europe, people from the States. On one side, it's very much just drawn from our imaginations, but the way it's met the world 
is um, feels much more rooted in reality. I wanted to ask you about you've got another film in the pipeline in premiere in Berlin. Uh, it's called Mogul Mowgli. You've made various references to both the words in many albums. Mogul Mowgli, the, the the film is one that I'm really proud of. It's super personal. I think part of what I'm trying to do, what Basam's trying to do, is kind of like try and find a, a grammar and a language for our experience. The idea of Mogul Mowgli, I guess, is like speaks to the the dichotomy of, of my identity and a lot of people's identity where you feel like you come from this rich heritage, but your reality might be one of kind of being, you know, the lost man cub roaming the urban jungle, wondering which, which animal to emulate. And so you emulate the Black Panther. So you emulate, you know, the orangutan. You, you know, you don't know um, really who you are, but you know you came from somewhere that was better than this, or you were told it was better than this. I don't know, I think a lot of time you make personal stuff, or I make personal stuff because I just want to get something off my chest. You want to kick me out, but I'm still locked in. What's my name? She wanna put the walls up. Uh-huh. She wanna build a border. Uh-uh. She ain't got no more love. Oh, put them up, put them up. She wanna call the feds up. Uh-uh. She wanna see me get. Uh-huh. She wanna see me dead. Bro. Uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, there's one thing. Everyone who I'm doing kind of like this video call with, I kind of grab my camera and try to do like a portrait across the screen. Mind if you don't mind that. Sure. Come on. Okay. Camera. Don't thank you. Sing. Uh, Talk about tick, 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 t